Hi everyone, I'm John Papasturgio. Welcome to the chapter, How Can I Manage Workflow in My Busy Community Pharmacy to Provide Optimal Patient-Focused Care? Upon completion of this module, you'll be able to apply techniques to integrate pharmacy assistants, regulated technicians, and or pharmacy students into the dispensary workflow in order to maximize patient-centered care activities, integrate strategies to assist in the consistent delivery of patient care services, and identify opportunities for workflow improvements in your pharmacy to provide optimal patient-focused care. Over the last few years, we've observed a dramatic evolution in the profession of pharmacy. The scope of practice has expanded to help meet the changing healthcare needs of the Canadian public and to reduce the pressures placed on the healthcare system. Traditionally, the pharmacist's role has centered on the procurement and safe distribution of medication. In recent years, pharmacists have seen an expanded role to include a portfolio of clinical service offerings, such as medication reviews, prescription renewals, clinical adaptations, and vaccinations. As a result, pharmacists have found themselves challenged with time, workflow and staffing issues, and the ability to offer consistent, sustainable services to their patients. These challenges are the direct result of attempting to balance conventional pharmacy dispensing services with the consistent provision of clinical programs. Here's a typical example from a busy community pharmacy. The pharmacist must balance checking prescriptions with ringing phones, physician calls, over-the-counter questions, technician lunch breaks, new walk-in prescriptions, and a whole host of other activities. It is understandable that the provision of sustainable professional services could be a challenge in this environment. In order to transition into a workflow model that enables the provision of sustainable clinical services, in addition to practicing to our standards of practice, it is necessary to understand a number of key concepts. One, pharmacy labor investments are instrumental to sustainability. Two, traditional measures of pharmacy productivity need to evolve. Three, understanding the evolving role of the key pharmacy players is essential. And four, embracing technology and innovation can enhance productivity. Let's look at the first concept. Pharmacy labor investments are instrumental to sustainability. One of the fundamental oversights made by pharmacy managers and owners when initially integrating clinical programs into their practice is that they fail to make the necessary investments in labor. The expectation is that programs will be offered using the traditional labor model. This may work during periods of low prescription volume when pharmacists are able to assess and dispense prescriptions, provide medication counseling, and offer additional clinical services such as vaccinations or medication reviews. However, during busy periods, staff pharmacists will almost always revert back to their traditional dispensing model and abandon any attempt to offer additional clinical programs. This sends a mixed message to patients and will fail to differentiate the pharmacy as a facility that excels in the provision of patient-centered healthcare services. Let's look at concept number two. Traditional measures of pharmacy productivity need to evolve. The traditional pharmacy business model was entirely transaction-based. Dispensary productivity was assessed using measures such as scripts per labor hour or wage cost per script. This was appropriate for a model centered on dispensing. A typical pharmacy would be deemed productive if it were able to achieve a productivity of anywhere between five to eight scripts per labor hour or a cost to fill of about four or five dollars per script. Unfortunately, these productivity measures do not apply very well to a service-based model. Most clinical services are reimbursed according to a fee-for-service model. Fees are dependent on the time required to offer the service and the complexity of the program. Pharmacy managers will find it difficult to evaluate the return on investment of these clinical programs if they rely on antiquated productivity measures. It may be more appropriate to assess the productivity of these clinical programs separately from a traditional dispensing service. A measure such as wages as a percentage of sales would address both the investment in labor required to offer the service and the resulting revenue generated from the fees. Although variable, a return of 20 to 25% works well for most currently funded programs. Consequently, the financial success of these programs could be more accurately assessed and changes to labor investments could be made based on these thresholds. Next, we'll move on to the third concept. Understanding the evolving roles of all the key pharmacy players is essential. Let's observe the workflow in a dispensary that has been optimized to offer consistent, sustainable professional services. 
In this example, there is one regulated pharmacy technician and two dispensary assistants available to complete technical tasks and appropriately direct patient queries. The pharmacist is free to focus on professional services and address patient health concerns. Note the efficient, seamless workflow. The ability to offer sustainable patient-centered services extends beyond the pharmacist. Dispensary assistants and regulated technicians are instrumental in the successful implementation of these programs. Their primary goal is to champion the dispensing function such that pharmacist time dedicated to technical tasks can be limited and devoted instead to patient-centered services. As the role of the pharmacist has evolved, so is that of the technician. As of December 2010, pharmacy technicians are regulated healthcare professionals with clearly defined standards of practice. Many pharmacies have yet to capitalize on this expanded role. Integrating a technician into practice offers a viable solution to the workflow issues faced by many pharmacies, particularly when maximizing the technician's scope. In order to do this, however, we as pharmacists must clearly understand what a technician could do under their own authority and as a regulated healthcare professional. In general terms, the division of responsibilities can be defined as the technician. Technicians are accountable and responsible for technical tasks of both new and refill prescriptions. In other words, the correct patient, drug, dosage form, dose, doctor. The pharmacist. Pharmacists remain accountable and responsible for the therapeutic and clinical appropriateness of all new and refill prescriptions and all therapeutic consultation. This involves the pharmacist gathering all relevant information and making an assessment of an individual patient prior to the provision of new or refill medications, medication information or counseling, or any other clinical service a pharmacist may provide. More specifically, a regulated pharmacy technician can ensure that a prescription vial contains the right drug and quantity, ensure that prescription data entry is done accurately and matches the original prescription issued by the prescriber, accept verbal prescriptions, excluding narcotic controlled and targeted substances, receive and provide prescription transfers, again, excluding narcotic controlled and targeted substances, perform a procedure on a tissue below the dermis, for example, using a lancing device. While the objective of integration is to optimize the roles of the technician and pharmacist, workflow will be dependent on a number of individual variables, including one, prescription volume, two, OTC traffic, three, physical layout, four, pharmacy experience, and five, patient demographics. There is no cookie cutter approach to maximize workflow and productivity. It may be necessary for pharmacies to experiment in order to balance all these variables. Let's examine the workflow in a busy community pharmacy during flu season. In this scenario, two pharmacists are required. One of them is busy with immunization. Again, the workflow is efficient, uninterrupted, and seamless. Moreover, in addition to diverting technical tasks, technicians can play an indirect role in the professional programs themselves. In order to do this, they must be able to first, divine the service. The tech must be able to explain why they are offering the patient, understand basic processes to deliver the service, describe the nature of the consultation, duration of appointments, items covered, explain the inherent benefits of the service, promote a personalized approach, target maximum results in drug therapies, support through regular follow-up, and provide answers to questions. In addition to defining the service, the technician must also screen for patients, notify the pharmacist about eligible patients, call patients to remind them about appointments, and provide other follow-up support. By optimizing the integration of regulated pharmacy technicians, the efficiency of the dispensary function can be improved and the focus of the pharmacist can shift to offering professional services. Our last concept is embracing technology and innovation can enhance productivity. Finally, with today's steady prescription growth, pharmacy operators are looking for new and creative ways to handle prescription volume. They're experimenting with innovative solutions to help them reduce labor productivity costs, free up pharmacist time, and maintain the important patient relationship. Let's take a moment to discuss the role that technology can play in optimizing dispensary workflow. Technological advancements have dramatically changed the way that pharmacies fill their prescriptions and the way that pharmacists interact with their patients. The most significant of these changes include paperless workflow, automated dispensing, and centralized fill. Traditional dispensaries rely very heavily on paper, 
Everything from hard copies to log or on hold prescriptions to transfers are documented in paper and manually filed. This is an extremely tedious and time consuming process. Scanning technology has allowed us to transition to a paperless environment. Low value tasks such as basket staging and prescription filing have been eliminated completely. All documentation is stored electronically and can be easily retrieved. The benefits to productivity and labor are enormous. In an atmosphere of a busy dispensary, every minute counts. Automated dispensing machines or dispensing robots have the ability to fill and label prescriptions very quickly and accurately. They have been shown to improve both dispensary efficiency and patient safety. As pharmacists look for additional ways to free up time for direct patient care activities, and as the cost of these devices continues to decline, we are certain to see them more frequently in community pharmacies. A natural extension of the automation process is central fill. Using central fill, pharmacies can aggregate prescriptions from multiple locations and funnel them to a centrally located prescription fulfillment center. Once there, prescriptions are assembled, verified, packaged, and are delivered back to the originating pharmacy. Although this model is not yet common in Canada, it is widely used in national chains in the United States. The cost to fill a prescription can be reduced to as low as $1 per script as compared to $4 to $5 in a traditional pharmacy. These productivity gains have the potential to dramatically change dispensary workflow. Technological solutions also impact the way that patients interact with their pharmacies. Electronic refills allow patients to have access to emailed refill reminders and then to automatically request that their prescriptions be prepared. In addition to the obvious adherence benefits, these solutions relieve congestions at the pharmacy and allow for workload to be systematically completed in advance. For those patients that do choose to visit the pharmacy directly, patient paging systems allow them to wander the store and to be contacted when their prescription is ready. Confidentiality must be considered when implementing paging systems. Again, this allows for more streamlined workflow and reduces the stress and anxiety experienced by pharmacy staff as a result of unplanned spikes in prescription volume. Let's take a look at a couple of multiple choice questions. Which of the following is an example of how the expanded role of a regulated pharmacy technician could free up pharmacist time? A, counseling a patient. B, answering the telephone. C, giving a flu shot. D, receiving a prescription transfer. The correct answer is D, receiving a prescription transfer. Here is one more question. Which of the following is an example of how technology can be used to improve dispensary productivity? A, using point of care screening during a medication review. B, hiring a regulated pharmacy technician. C, implementing an e-refill program for patients or D, stop answering the telephone during busy periods? The correct answer is C, implementing an e-refill program for patients. As we end this chapter, I urge you to reflect on which of your current responsibilities you think could be performed by other members of your pharmacy team. As the scope of pharmacy practice continues to evolve, pharmacists like yourselves will be tasked with changing their workflow models. I hope this module was a great first step in this process and I wish you all the best of luck.